Hello, and welcome to another episode of questions that get asked uh, hundreds of times a day and really just finally need an official answer. Today's question is, should I learn React? And do we need a, we need a little song or something here? Let's go and make one. We need a little introduction song. This seems pretty good. Kind of pensive. Yeah, it's good. Hmm, all right, some pad maybe, some synthesizer, pad. This isn't what you came here for, but you know, why did you come here anyway? Oh, that's such a weird thing I made. Why did I do that to myself? I should have used a click track. Note to self, next time we make a react answer. Plan ahead so you don't make a big, huge, giant mess. Okay, now that we've scared away all of the impatient people who wouldn't want the real answer anyway. Drum roll. Should I learn React? The answer is for you, the person who's asking this question, are you asking this question? Are you saying, should I learn React? Are you? If that if that is a question, if your question, if you're here, you're honestly saying, should I learn React? The answer is 100% definitely no. Seriously. I know it's sort of a trick answer here, but if you don't know if you should learn React or not, you should definitely, definitely not. You have no business learning React, just like you don't have any business learning any specialized anything anywhere that you don't know about. Should I learn how to fix some kind of special 16th century furniture? No, I should not because I don't even know anything about furniture. Should I learn, look at this. This was totally unintentional, but this impromptu stupid song I made here. Should you go in and learn the extreme details of one of these synthesizers, you know, if you can even find out how to get to one. Should, should you come in here and somehow learn everything about the alchemy synthesizer type thing? Should you? If you're asking that question, no, definitely not. Because you don't know even what it is. It's just, no, it's not for you yet. It doesn't mean you can't learn it later. It doesn't mean you're not cool. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. It just means you're being smart. It means you are paying attention to what you need to pay attention to. Can you make an HTML website? Because I, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a secret about the industry, about the web. The web is made up of HTML. So if you can't write a really great, accessible, you know, really great HTML page, you, well, you can't, you shouldn't even, you shouldn't learn anything else yet if you're going to be making things for the web. In the end, all React does is spit out HTML and you know some event listeners and stuff. You, I mean, it's great. Seriously, the people who make React are really smart people. This isn't about if React is good or not. It's about if you don't know that you need to learn React, then you definitely should not learn React. If you don't know how to play a, a piano just a little, you know how to hit the keyboards and stuff, then no, you shouldn't go learn some expensive specific uh, keyboard interface. What's another good example? I mean, there's a reason why we don't teach babies how to play badminton. They can't even walk yet. They can't, you know, they're work. They're working on other stuff. We got to level up here in order of importance. You know why I know this? It's not because I'm some jerk who hates React or something, or uh, it's because I did this to myself. I learned jQuery. What does that even mean? Learned it. I started using jQuery for years, didn't have any idea what, how, what JavaScript, how JavaScript worked at all, if you can believe that. I used jQuery in my job all the time, had no idea even how to write a single JavaScript function, just a regular JavaScript function. I had just memorized how things looked. I used it for years. I made the same mistake when Angular JS first came out. I learned how to make directives and stuff, but I had no idea what was happening there. Huge waste of time. Then they, you know, forked 
Angular basically and created a whole new, who knows, they're on like Angular 8 now or something. So all of that memorization and just visually seeing the shape of these JavaScript objects and classes and things that I had no understanding of, it worked. I could pull some stuff together, but I didn't, I wasn't learning it. I didn't, it was, it was a waste of time in the long run. Later on, I started trying to learn Ember once uh, Angular forked because I wanted to find like a long-term bet. What, what kind of framework could I learn? Uh, and as I started asking questions in the Ember community, they, you know, it was like, huh, why is this guy asking these questions this way? It became very clear. I didn't know enough JavaScript or enough really MVC framework thinking to be able to ask an intelligent question about Ember. When you learn a framework, you're not just learning a language. You're learning, whether it's a library or a framework, you're learning templating, HTML, you're learning you know, how do you keep things accessible? How do you manage style sheets through a big application? How do you manage all the different events? How do you get into state? How do you do routing? You're learning so many things. It's like you skipped medical school and you just went straight to open heart surgery. It's not intelligent. I did it. You shouldn't do it. You, what you should do in order of importance is learn in order of importance. If you can't make a, web, a website, <laughs> and then I, I don't mean to laugh. If you can't make a website, start there, make one. If you can't make a website look great and function on all screen sizes and be, you know, have responsive layouts and, and have like great content hierarchy and be readable and enjoyable to look at, focus on CSS. Just don't leave there yet. You, those are great skills. There's tons and tons of companies that need somebody who can write quality HTML and CSS. Trust me, that's a way bigger gap in most companies than the JavaScript developers. Once you want to start getting interactive stuff happening on your website, great, learn some JavaScript, right? You can you know, do all sorts of stuff. You can learn about, you know, the ideas behind reactive, uh, you know, reactive stuff, which React isn't even reactive technically, but you can, you, you know, build out all the sorts of different templates and things. And you, you can get really far with just plain JavaScript these days. It's amazing, the string templating stuff or template strings, whatever they call it. Just regular JavaScript. You could build a whole app with it uh, without any libraries, really. When you start running into trouble, when you start running into where JavaScript becomes pretty cumbersome and a library sounds like it's gonna be helpful or some kind of third-party code, you start to see patterns or holes in the system where you're like, I really wish I could do this a little bit better. Then you're gonna start to think, about uh, you know creating your own kind of framework, and then those ideas are going to uh, move forward, and you're gonna you're gonna be able to hit the wall. You know, if you're blind in the dark, you're like, okay, here's the corner. I think I found it. JavaScript is amazing, but I need something else. I need state management. There's too many things happening on the page. There's I've got buttons that change things, and a graph down at the bottom, and user input, and I need all these different parts of the application to be able to pay attention to each other. I need some special routing that goes beyond what the HTTP type of stuff is doing. I need something snappier than PHP can give me, than server-side rendered things can do. I want to do something in real time, or I'm working on a project with many people and my special classes and component architecture that I made for myself is sort of unique and maybe we should all be using the same, maybe we just need to come up with a shared idea of how these components are gonna be built and used together. Native web components are still a little bit in the gray area. There's lots of reasons to use a library or a framework, but when you get there, when you get to that edge, when you start to understand why these frameworks, you know, Batman, Knockout, Angular, Ember, there's so many different ones. Vue now. You're going to see, oh, okay, well, this is how Vue does it. It's sort of template first, at least Vue 1.0 or whatever. And then we got, and that's basically a fork of Angular 1.5. And then Angular is doing this whole thing, and it's got routing, and, and Ember, it's got routing, and these are full, fully fledged frameworks. And then you got React, and you've got Vue, and a whole bunch of other ones you could name. You could check out Chris Ferdinandi's Reef as an example of a, a really small little framework. At that point, you know what you need. Do you need routing? Is that something your project needs? Do you need um, some kind of more clarified component architecture? Is your app really that big, really? I feel like most of them aren't that confusing. They're not that complicated. Do you want a, a big framework? Do you want to use Ember? you want to go you know, act like an adult? Do you want to use 
uh, Angular because your boss told you to? Do you want to use uh, React because it's hip uh, and you can do anything in it apparently and it has no conventions? Do you want to use Vue 2 and uh, quickly just tack on some uh, directive style attributes and, and get something going that way in a code pen? What tooling is required for each of these? For every tool that makes something easier, it's going to add to your tech debt stack. So the, every single thing you use is just adding to a, a bigger project, more things to break, more things to maintain, more NPM packages to update. Is this sounding confusing? Well, it is. And so if you're asking this question, should I use React, and you don't understand all those things I just said in much more detail than me, then the answer is no, you should not use React. You should just keep enjoying learning JavaScript, learning HTML, learning CSS. Learn how to make uh, some really cool interfaces that you can make amazing interfaces just in a code pen or a JS fiddle. You can make a small project locally on your computer. You can make an amazing portfolio of interface ideas and different prototypes. And uh, you don't need to use React for a portfolio project. In fact, as somebody who might hire you, if I looked at your portfolio project and it was a three page about contact and welcome page and it's run with React, it just shows me you don't know how to choose tools. It shows me, first of all, I can't read your HTML. There's a million divs with no classes on them. You got material design shoved in there everywhere. You look like somebody who has no center. You don't understand the tools in any way that's clear enough for me or anyone else to hire you. So do I dislike React? No. Should you learn it? Not if you can't answer that for yourself. All right, that's the end of the video. That's the answer to the question. Should you learn React? Definitely not. If you saw any advertisements during this video, we definitely do not condone any of those products or services in any way. If you're interested in becoming a real designer who can design and build their own uh, MVPs, their own applications, uh, somebody who has a robust portfolio that really proves their understanding of this field uh, instead of just a person who kind of learned React once and now forgot it and is sad they don't have a job, then check us out because we're the type of school that does that. Get out of tutorial purgatory and stop learning all that shit you shouldn't learn.